Welcome, this is Eric Grotebois. Today is September 22nd, 2016. I am the owner and founder of EPGD Business Law, and we are doing another Facebook Live video blog. This is from a blog that uh, Talia posted this Monday, and we're gonna be talking about international trademarks, and more specifically, what is the Madrid Protocol? Now, since that is a really mundane and kind of boring topic, I'm gonna go a little big picture and expand on it a little bit. So how about bigger than that? What is a trademark? Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen the little TM. You may be seeing the circle R. Uh, maybe you got confused and saw the little circle with a C. Um, maybe you think it's a patent, okay? So big picture, we're talking about intellectual property. And I like to think of intellectual property in three big baskets. I'm sure that there's a better definition, but I think of branding, I think of copyrights, and I think of patents, okay? There's also trade secrets, um, there's also perhaps other things that are confidential, but let's just think about those three big baskets. So here at EPGD Law, we do a lot of trademark work and we do a lot of copyright work. We do not do patent work. Patents are for inventions, um, for new ways of doing things, and typically patent lawyers are traditionally known as the happiest lawyers in America because they're doing what they love. They are scientists and engineers by training. They must have one of those degrees and then they have to take a special bar to be a patent lawyer. Pretty cool. So uh, tra uh, it's not the same at all for trademark or copyright law. However, I will say that I, I think it's probably my favorite area of law that we practice here. So focusing specifically on trademarks, there are three types of trademarks. There are common law trademarks, which just means you're using your brand in commerce. Okay, so you are a company, whatever your company is called, and then you sell a product. Whatever that product is called, um, so this is a Tombow mono correction tape wide. I don't know if they bothered to trademark this, or how about this is a Polycom phone. Um, Quill is actually the office supplier that gave us this um, calculator. Expo is the brand of these dry erase markers. iPhone is the brand of my phone. So all these brands, just by virtue of using them in commerce, you have what's called a common law trademark. Now the common law is what we inherited from England, and it basically means that if you have a problem with somebody else, you can go to court on your common law rights. So my common law right is that if I start selling something under the brand iPhone, my name is Steve Jobs, and then somebody else uses something confusingly similar or the same, I can sue them in court. Now under our common law system, we do not get attorney's fees or costs. So you're paying your own way. So the step above that is state-by-state state registration of your trademark. So the state of Florida has its own registration process. So does Washington, D.C., so does Maryland, so, so do many other jurisdictions. Actually, I'll take that back. I'm not sure if Washington, D.C. does, just because I can never remember actually doing a D.C. trademark. But I will say, most states do. And so in that case, you're under the state laws, uh, passed in this case in Tallahassee. And so the state laws in Tallahassee say that if somebody else is infringing on your right to your brand anywhere in the state of Florida, you have the right to sue them in state court using the, the, the state statutes. So that's a step above the common law. Common law are just kind of the general principles we all agree to that we've inherited from our forefathers. The statutes is the laws passed in Tallahassee. So in this case, the law allows you to ask for attorney's fees, for example. So if somebody comes to you with a good case based on Florida state law, you can file the lawsuit and you can be sure that if you win, you should be awarded attorney's fees by the court. It's not automatic, but it's there in the statute. So then a step beyond that, and really as far as we typically go in the United States, is federal registration. So federal registration of the trademark is through the USPTO, the United States Patent and Trademark Office in Alexandria, Virginia. And there's a process, it's quite a bit longer, there's quite a bit more expenses involved. But generally speaking, if you're approved, you at that point have the right to use the little circle R symbol. Um, whereas anybody, whether you register it or not, can use the TM. I like to say the TM is like staking your claim, you're putting your flag in the sand, um, you know, you're the first people to the new world. Um, once you get the R, you've actually gone through the process of filing paperwork and getting it proved by the government. Now, if you have a problem nationwide, you can threaten to or in fact sue someone under the Lantham Act. And that's the federal statute that brought our entire federal trademark system nationwide. So under that act, you also will get attorney's fees, you'll get costs, potentially you'll get triple damages in certain cases. So that's really the highest and most powerful one. Just to bring it back down, under the common law, all you got is maybe as big as your market is. So branding my law firm, I'm EPGD Law, I've certainly got Miami-Dade County, but I probably 
don't have Tampa, maybe I have Broward. It's arguable. Uh, but if I do a state registration, now all of a sudden I got the whole state. I certainly have Tallahassee, Monroe County, Jacksonville. But then if I do a federal trademark, now I arguably have the entire United States. Now there's a lot of caveats, it's a pretty complicated area of law, but the purpose of this blog post is what is the Madrid Protocol? Okay, so the Madrid Protocol is pretty cool. It is um, through the, it's through an agency of the UN called WIPO, or W-I-P-O, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your US federally registered trademark, okay? So we're above common law, we're above state, we've done a federal trademark. I've got the little circle R, which you only have the right to once you have a federal trademark. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna register it, I'm gonna apply to have it registered anyways through this UN agency. Now, not every country in the world is a member to this particular uh, treaty under the, the UN agency, WIPO, but a number of them are, many of them that are our trading partners. And what it does is it gives you a shortcut to then get your trademark registered in those other countries. Now, it's not automatic. You don't automatically, just by applying through this agency, now all of a sudden have your US trademark apply worldwide or rather to the countries that are a member of the organization. But if I say, you know what, I'm gonna expand and I'm gonna do business in this country, this country, this country, and this country, I've already got my federal trademark, I've already now applied for and had it approved by WIPO, then I can go and pretty quickly and easily get it approved in those other countries. That is subject, of course, to pre-existing, pre-registered marks already in those countries. So I need to be careful. And I might want to do my due diligence. And there are a number of agencies, even here in the United States, but worldwide, that can do what's called a trademark search. Okay, now, another important caveat. There are a number of countries in the world that are not members of this treaty. So doing this extra step will not help you in that regards, and you'll have to go country by country. Um, a lot of uh, times, my Latin American clients, especially, or I'll, I'll think of it bigger picture. I've got a Spanish client, they're a member of the treaty, they have European registration, they have Spanish registration, they wanna to come to the United States, we do US registration, and now they wanna to go to South America, which you know is dozens of countries. And unfortunately, you're, you're looking at dealing with the bureaucracy, the filing fees, country by country. So typically they say, well, I want, I want all of South America. I'm like, well, you know what, let's be more tactical. Where are we actually gonna do business? Are we really gonna do business in Brazil and Uruguay and Paraguay, or are we really just gonna pick, you know, maybe Colombia and Argentina? So you need to actually be strategic about it. Um, now, it is arguable, and this is a whole another area, is if maybe a Venezuelan mark co a company copies your mark after you've already got your registrations in a couple other states, and you're already doing business in Colombia, but truly that's outside the scope of today's post. What's important for today's post is that it, it is possible to take your US federal registered trademark and have some worldwide rights through the Madrid protocols. The process is pretty easy. There's really only about four or five steps. And anybody who has questions about that, feel free to give us a call.